Muick likes to use photographs or anatomy textbooks for his visual references. For the pregnant woman, though, he also had several intensive sessions working with a life model who was herself pregnant and actually gave birth before Muick's work was completed. As the maquette was being sculpted, Muick made the decision to work on a monumental scale. Big sketches on brown paper were drawn as part of that decision-making process. Muick's finished works are cast in silicon and fiberglass, but he begins by sculpting in clay. It is in this clay sculpt that Muick models the remarkable detail which can then be transferred to a mould and cast to make the final piece. After the maquette was finished, Muick began work on the final piece. His first job was to construct a base on which to build up the layers of clay. This consisted of a frame of scaffolding tubes on which the artist roughly defined the forms of the woman with chicken wire covered with layers of bandaging soaked in plaster. The strange alien looking form is the pregnant woman before the addition of the clay. The clay was built up slowly. The resultant irregular surface was then carefully scraped and smoothed. details were gradually and painstakingly refined and perfected. The goose flesh, for example, was made by applying and smoothing down dabs of clay slurry with a brush. When all of the detail was completed, a layer of shellac varnish was applied. Shellac prevents the clay from drying out and cracking during the taking of the mould.
Taking the mould was a long and difficult process. Highly skilled and experienced technical assistants were needed. Firstly, they needed to decide how the mould could be divided up into sections. By making the mould in several pieces, with the joints in the most appropriate places, it should make it easier to remove. Moulds can be made of a variety of materials. The mould for the pregnant woman was made from silicon and followed a similar process to that used for the mother and child. The silicon was applied in liquid form directly onto the clay sculpt. When set, silicon's rubbery texture retains even the finest detail. On the much larger pregnant woman, this silicon layer was supported by applying toweling, then fiberglass and resin. Everything bonds together to form the mould. The fiberglass layer is coloured blue to make it easier to distinguish it from the silicon lining. A wooden frame was made before removing the mould from the clay sculpt to keep the mould rigid after it had been taken off. The mould was attached to the frame with metal brackets which perfectly located it in the exact position of the original sculpt. Removing the wooden frame but leaving the locating brackets in place, the mould was carefully taken off. This was a difficult process. It took hours. The clay sculpture was more or less destroyed in the process, so it was vitally important to get the mould off without damaging it, or weeks of work would have been wasted. The deep undercuts around the face were the trickiest bit because they prevented the top half coming away which in turn locked the front of the legs in place. The mould eventually came away only after much of the head of the clay sculpt was cut out. Any shellac or clay that stuck to the silicon lining of the mould could be washed away later. Once off, the flexible mould was put back into the wooden frame to hold it in place, ready for casting. Casting such a big sculpture in the National Gallery studio was not possible, and so Muick took the mould to his own studio where the work would be completed. With the move to a new space to cast the pregnant woman, Muick also began to work on another piece that he had been thinking about for some while, the tiny swaddled baby. This is the